Hello and welcome to the British Dressage Fan Zone. Um, hopefully this is all working and we are going live out on social media. Um, I have got an iPad here, so if anyone wants to write in and ask us any questions or get involved, um, and then hopefully everyone around us here can hear us as well on the big screen, but I don't know if that is happening at the moment. Oh, there we go. Now you can hear me. Welcome to the fan zone, everyone. Um, I'm hoping you can hear me. Our poor sound technician actually wants to kill me right now. Um, so we are talking about all things freestyle today uh, with the wonderful Matt Frost. And of course, as like yesterday, I'm joined by the brilliant Bobby Haler. And uh, I know she's got lots of questions for you, Matt, so I hope you're ready. <laughs> Not that I'm intimidated by Bobby's questions, but um, I'm sure I'll do my best to It'll answer be them. Lovely questions, Matt. <laughs> lovely questions, as always. Um, and as I say, we are live on Facebook. So if you want to send us in any questions for Matt or for Bobby or myself, um, don't ask me too much about dressage, um, <laughs> then I can definitely answer your questions. Um, but Matt, freestyle. Now I have lots of questions because I find it a wonder and awe that you can do a, remember a whole dressage test in the first place. But to remember it, do it to the beat, do it to music. But it is the bit that everyone loves, isn't it? Yeah, and that's really why I got into dressage. I went to Olympia and Jenny Lauriston Clark uh, did a demo there. Um, and that's where I kind of got the bug for dressage. I was eventing at the time quite badly. <laughs> and I just thought I was quite musical at school. And, uh, you know, I was like, that's what I want to do. Musical so. at school? I need to just go on to mm. this. What, what, what musical? What were your... Uh... I, I played the piano, clarinet and guitar. Wowzers. Yes. Things you didn't know about Matt Frost right there. Probably badly, but my <laughs> mum said I was brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Um, and also, it is the one... Um, the problem with dressage is that if you don't understand or you don't know anything about it, it does just look like someone... A, a horse wearing someone and going around in circles, let's face it. But the moment you put it to music, for someone who doesn't understand how difficult it is, and the moment someone does really know how hard you're working up there it becomes suddenly magical doesn't it and that's why it's so important especially at the Olympic level and those top top championship levels absolutely and quite a lot of my friends aren't horsey and then they actually watch it to music and my family watch it to music and they're like oh that all makes sense now yeah you know and uh, I think it's just great for, for especially this year at the the nationals that we've got the pre St George freestyle as well as the inter one um, which we're doing later on today and uh, it's nice for me to be able to get in the ring again my horse was quite spooky today uh, and yesterday and I think with the floor plans that you can you can develop and adapt to how your horse is so if it is quite a spooky horse you can do quite a lot of amendments to it during the test itself and squeeze a few more marks out of the judges <laughs> yeah that's the bit that blows my tiny mind okay before i hand over to bobby this is the thing like i struggle to remember a dressage test i event so i learn it on the way to the uh, competition so that's my problem probably but the way that you in the middle of like your music you can suddenly go oh we missed a bit or we you add it in and that just um it just shows up quick thinking, doesn't it? It's amazing. I know you guys do it all the time, but to us mere mortals, I find that bit just absolutely mind-blowing. Yeah, and not, not, not all the time we do get that, right? There's been a <laughs> number of times in my career where I've messed it up and added things that I shouldn't have added and got behind my music or ahead Hot of wheels, music. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, you, you do have to be quick thinking. Um, I think it's really important that you remember is that there is a big technical mark to it, so you need to do the dressage bit really, really, really well. Um, I think sometimes we get too involved in the music and forget actually we've got these set movements that we have to do in each level of test and uh, do them well. And uh, talking about things that go wrong, I know that that was a, bo a Bobby question. She was very keen to talk about these things because we put her on the spot yesterday and spoke about how she... Uh, I'm going to bring it up again today, Bobby. Here we go. Here we go. How you uh, halted facing the wrong way. Yeah, I um, might have been uh, looking at A and not C when I saluted at the judge, but these things happen. The music stopped and I panicked and then looked up and realised that that was not the judge. So I did, you know, that sneaky little warp pirouette, turned around, saluted and walked out. Yeah. My story is not that bad then. Oh. <laughs> heard that. Bound to have one mat that's level to that, surely. Well, there was a year I did the Winter Championships and I won the Pre St George freestyle in the evening and I used the same music for my into one pattern. And I think you kind of get used to the cues of the music and whatever. And so I go in and I do my test and I'm like, that's even better than yesterday. And came out of the arena waving at everybody. And my mark came up of like 63%. And I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> and Adam, bless him, he was in the working in 
banging his head against the brick wall. I'd done two left counter pirouettes and no right. So that is an instant zero for the pirouette, yeah. which is a times two, and 5.5 .5 for choreography because it didn't Ouch. actually show all of the movements that we were supposed to be doing. So that was a very rookie error. And very touch wood, I've never done it since. <laughs> but it happens to the best of us. But Matt, for everyone at home and everyone that's here that's listening now, where do you even start putting a freestyle together? Do you put the music to the horse or do you put a floor plan first and then do the music? I, at the lower levels, I would tend to have had the music done first because I think horses adapt, uh, develop, sorry, uh, quite quickly over that level. So they develop their trots. So sometimes you, uh, you are ahead of your music. So if you kind of ride to the music a bit more, I, I tend to find that working better. But from pre St. George and above, I will always do the floor plan first. Um, to suit my horse and then get it sent away to a professional to do the music. I wouldn't even attempt to do it myself. <laughs> um, that's not my job. Um, and it costs money, uh, but I, it, you can have as many choices as you want of music and keep, keep it on going, developing the, the freestyle music itself until it's perfect and how you want it. And then you crack on and ride it. Without going wrong, which is the plan. <laughs> yes, that is the plan. So another thing that I love about the freestyle as well is that you must know your horse really well because you can really put the movements anywhere, can't you, as long as we do the ones that we have to do that are required in that level. So, you know, think a little bit about where, or when we talk about the walk, it's great, but tell us a little bit more about why the walk can be a little bit easier in a freestyle than it can in a normal test. Well, you have to, you, you have a minimum... Uh, number of meters to show the walk in. The walk's quite good because if you're ahead or behind your music, you can kind of squiggle about it and get it right. Um, and also, if your horse hasn't got a particularly good walk, you can go and hide at the other end of the arena away from the judge and uh, get that out of the way with, because also you've only got extended walk and collective walk to show. So, you know, if your horse has got a basically a bad walk, you you have to just get the bare minimum and get it done. <laughs> yeah, it's one thing. So, I, you, especially when we were at the Olympics and uh, when we watched the Olympics a lot, it was very interesting to see how many of the top riders did the collective walk down the long side away from the judges. Yeah. Because obviously, you know, the collective walk can be quite a difficult one to do um, if they show any tension or anything, can't it? So that's where the freestyle is is really quite good. But when you think about music, Matt, what's your favourite type of music? Are you a Disney man? No. Oh, damn. <laughs> you will not get any Disney on this stage <laughs> at any point over the next four days, I can will. I just tell you? I will. <laughs> she is determined to get some Disney in here. Well, I am a bit of a drama queen, so I do like dramatic, oh, really? dramatic <laughs> music myself. Today's music I'm using with Helga, I've actually borrowed off of a young rider I used to teach, Vixie Appleyard, and she went to the European Championships with this music, and it just suits Helga really, really well. So I borrowed it, and I did really well with her at Wellington. Uh, but then tomorrow I've gotten into one freestyle that's been especially for her um, we've got David Guetta we've got Sia oh no nice. yes that's quite I, I love it. it I think for me I you know you can't appeal to everybody's taste of music so it has to reflect you as a person and the music that you like and the and your horse's personality mm -hmm. a bit and you know Helga's a you know she's bold and uh, powerful so unstoppable by see it's pretty good <laughs> <laughs> absolutely i think that's a really key thing there matt where you said that the music has to be right for you and your horse that's really important because sometimes people choose music that have got loads of lyrics and it sounds great when the person's singing but then the moment you take the lyrics out there's it's just sort of elevator music isn't it it's just background music yeah we're allowed more lyrics now in our freestyles which is great and i use them in, in the into one freestyle but i think it can take over if you're just using the whole track with the singing behind it and like you say it turns into a bit of elevator music if you haven't got any any lyrics to it so it becomes a bit boring yeah exactly and i think one of the things you said that it's so important to be inspired by your music you want to come down that center line i mean i know i definitely when i do a freestyle i feel all geared up and ready to go and i think everyone rides better don't they yeah very much so and i, I think it's also because you practice it at home it, it is a sort of common thing that you can then go out and it gives you more uh, more focus i think have you, uh, Matt, I'm going to put you on the spot here, because for me, I could never get bored of watching Laura's Tomlinson's test at the London 2012. Akuna Matata, there you go. There's your Disney for you. That, for me, always sends shivers. Um, and I don't know what it was about that music. I absolutely loved it. And it's so suited, Alf. Um, is there, from looking back in the past, is there a test that you remember that stands up just because you can remember the music? I think for me, being in London that, yeah. that year, and, and 
I'm a, a big fan of Blueberry. <laughs> Who isn't? Uh, I've yeah. written him, by the just, way. Just, uh, hashtag just saying. Just go. <laughs> um, <laughs> just the, the, the whole British theme of it. You know, yeah. we had you know, the, the chime in of the bells, Big Ben bells, and it just, it will stick in my mind, mm. all that. And I was so proud, not only that she won, <laughs> won, of course, but just proud to be British. And it was a representation of all of us. You know, we were sat there all watching and proud of actually getting gold, but it was like, yeah, that's us. And I think that's what we do with our, our own freestyles. So. Yeah, and anyone watching on social media, um, do tell us if you've got any favourites and we'll, we'll give you a shout out. Um, but also, when you have something like that test um, that Charlotte did with all sticks in our mind, with the bells, I mean, you know that's coming. That, there's no hiding, is there, with that? And it, does that give you more marks? How does that work into the music? How much is that worth in marks to someone who doesn't necessarily know about that level but just enjoys watching it? How much has she actually got to hit that marker to get those marks? She absolutely has to hit it because also at World Cup level now, we have to submit the floor plan. Yeah, th this is what you were saying, Bobby. It was just like, oh my God, that's terrifying. See, there's no wriggle room no, now. No, no. And uh, if you don't do what you say you're going to do, you get then a big... That doesn't work. Are you, Matt, there, are you allowed a free line when you hand in your floor plan? Is that, yeah, are you allowed yeah, you a free line? You are allowed a free line, but, but the, the way that you set the movements together... It creates a degree of difficulty. And that, funny enough, it's like with, with the Grand Prix, I was surprised that the degree of difficulty to, from going from Piaf to Trot is harder than from going from Piaf to Passage, which is very normal for a, a horse at Grand Prix level to do. So, yeah, you have to really study it. And I think um, it is surprising what they would count as a, a higher or a lower degree of difficulty. But we don't have that as small tool, luckily, because it would involve too much thought from me. <laughs> and um, looking at the Olympics, obviously, um, Charlotte bronze medal extraordinary but again when you watch all of them back to backs for someone who isn't competing at that level like myself and, and for many 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 people watching um what obviously it's spectacular and the music and you get that feel and that vibe but what is it that charlotte and those those three that gold silver what are they doing that those other riders apart from getting it right and getting the places in the right place what how does she get that level of difficulty to get those marks how is she getting that bronze medal she is getting it because she's really, really, really good. <laughs> um, and, the, you know, Carl helps her with her floor plans. And you look, I was lucky enough to actually be there in yep. person and watch those top riders ride. And they just, they've got something about them. It's a bit like watching Usain Bolt run. You know, yep. they've got something about them. And it's the determination and the commitment that they make to nailing every test, not only the freestyle, but every test. And the, the, the lines that they do, really steep half passes into you know, Piaf pirouettes back to Canto and it's another level. And that's, that's what I mean, like the lines that you d they do, they take risks that yeah. if, if it goes wrong, they're gonna lose a hell of a lot of marks, but actually if they pull them off, that's what's gonna win them the medal. Is that what they have to do then now at this level? You have to take risks. Without question, at, at, at any level, I think you have to take risks um, because the best person wins so if you don't take that chance you're you're not going to get there playing safe i think at the moment in this level of sport now that we've got in this country playing safe is not good enough no you can't <laughs> just turn up you gotta you gotta put your best hat on um and you you're in the psg freestyle am i correct right. what can we expect from you here at the nationals well <laughs> She was pretty spooky this morning, so I'd just be happy to get in the corners. <laughs> Stay on. That would be yeah. nice. <laughs> um, I, I know the freestyle very well. Uh, obviously, I said earlier, I, I trained Vixie, and I, I've choreographed it myself. So it's quite a flowy test. It's very good to uh, half passes into the pirouettes. And I don't tend to do the changes on a, a loop with her yet. They're on the straight line, which obviously isn't as... as difficult to do but for me it's it's being able to to nail the technical with her because i think the more relaxed she becomes the more expression and the more push i can give so you know at the moment i'm going to be playing a bit safe because it's important for me to get her in an environment like that mm. and uh, don't underestimate it is quite quite an environment even though there's not hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people like you would see uh, you know in london 2012 there's enough atmosphere there so it's also for me i'm going in there thinking right i can going to adjust my lines slightly to suit her how she's feeling later on because I won't know that until I go in the arena. Yeah, exactly. And it's quite interesting because some people, when they put a floor plan together, they try and make it really, really difficult. Yeah. 
It's unbelievable how difficult it is when you try and do it in the arena when it's that difficult. Each surface always runs a little bit different, doesn't Very it? Much so. You know, if it's a little bit deeper, it's going to run slower. And if it's quite a hard surface, it's going to run quite a lot quicker. So you have to really think about these things. And I think what you said there, Matt, about the fact that you haven't chosen a curve line, you need to get the changes. <laughs> you could do the curve line, but if you don't get the changes, it's irrelevant. Right, yeah. So I think it's quite a thing to think about, isn't it? That actually sometimes it can be quite a simple floor plan, but you can still win. Yeah. Because if you execute everything correctly, bingo. Well, Paul Wish again <laughs> at the Winter Championships another time. So I was, <laughs> he got a lot stronger. And of course I was covering more ground and I had a Robert Miles track and I was going for it. And I <laughs> got so ahead of my music in the Inter One and I was like going to the end and I needed to do the trot transition at sea and I do extended trot across the diagonal and that was that. So I thought, what at that level, what could I do to just get back on track? So I did a 20 meter circling oh, no. canter. <laughs> That's my imagination at that time. <laughs> That's what I was you went so with worried it. about messing circle. up. <laughs> just do a 20 meter circle. It's all about the basics, remember? Always. Suppleness. All good. <laughs> I absolutely love that. And we just had a comment from uh, Corey Fortley, who said, um, we were talking about music and things that we remember. She said, I saw a big cob at a local show do his test to have I, um, have you seen an elephant fly? Um, and it was brilliant and went so well with the horse. I love that. I absolutely love that. That was brilliant. Maybe that's some inspiration for you for your <laughs> next one. <laughs> yeah. Pigs might fly, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely brilliant. And, but it isn't amazing, isn't it? So even if you know that maybe you've not, um, if you're on a cob and they can, they're not going to be the most spectacular mover, actually putting them some fun music that everyone's going to enjoy, you can just have fun out there. And that's what it's about, isn't it? Absolutely. You, you, you do horses because it's fun. You ride because it is. You're passionate about animals. And uh, yeah. I think the, the freestyle does it, it enable you to have even more fun. It does. And also, it's really quite clever because if, you, if you're really clever with the music, you can actually make the horse look like they're moving in even bigger than they actually are. You know, if they're quite slow, you can have a slightly quicker music or vice versa, can't you? So that also with Gia, you know, he's not the biggest horse and he fills the ring when the music's actually on. And yeah. uh, Son of Murray Brown's uh, new freestyle was amazing at the, at the nationals we had at, just before Christmas last year, didn't we? And uh, I loved it. It was, it was so interchangeable and his degree of difficulty was very hard. So uh, he pulled it off as well, which is, is even better. Much better, yeah. But it doesn't matter how many times Carl brings out new music. In my head, he's always going to come down the centre line to you can leave your hat on. That's just, if in my head, that's what he's always like. I just remember when I got into this, that was his freestyle music. And that just always is in my head. In my head, that's the music he's coming down to. So it's amazing how they stick in your brain, that yeah. bit of music. So you've got to choose wisely, because that's what you're going to be remembered for. But coming back to your comment earlier, Jen, um, I don't know how you remember to go what show jumping course you go in. I think you just get used to yeah. learning tests and learning tests. I can't remember lines. I had to do a dab at one year for Horse and Country Television, and I fluffed my lines so much. But I, you just get used to learning a test. Um, so, we have had you on here for a long time. I know you actually have to go and do uh, riding of horses at some point. No. <laughs> <laughs> or riding of scooters, as you were doing last night. He's lethal. Never. If you see him coming on a scooter, dive out the way. That's all I can say, people. Um, but what would be people watching at home? And, and we were talking about the fact you can now do um, free. Uh, you can do it to music in prelim, all through the levels. So if that is like to me, I think it just makes for me who uh, is not the best at dressage. It would just make it so much more fun. What would be your top tips for anyone who's thinking, do you know what? I'm going to have a go at that. My top tip would be just be imaginative. Just go for it and uh, not be afraid of taking risks in, in what you do. And I think sometimes we tend to sort of hold back a bit because we're just frightened to, to take that chance. But just go and enjoy it. And do you know what, on that line, uh, Angela, thank you very much for your comment, Angela. Love Matt's quick thinking and daring approach to freestyle. A 20 meter circle. <laughs> yes, Matt. <laughs> I like to inspire. <laughs> you, you inspire in so many ways. So many ways. Um, thank you so much for coming on our fan zone stage. We are going to be here all day, guys. We've got loads of guests. So watch out on Facebook uh, for our live streams. And anyone here in the crowds, um, just come on over and listen to us. But Matt, thank you so much. Good luck in your PSG freestyle. You. Make sure you come on down. We have so much more dressage here at Summerford. So if you're in the area, get a ticket. Come on down loads of fun to be had but Matt as always you are an absolute star and a superstar to interview thank you so much thank you very much <laughs>